welcome back to Miller's in Motion. We are so excited to finally be in our new Alliance Valor 44 V14 and we are thrilled to get on the road. But first, let's talk upgrades and modifications. So if you've driven an RV in America, you know that the roads are not getting any better. Insert Shreveport, Louisiana video right here. <laughs> because of that on our last rig, we considered putting on the Moride IS, or Independent Suspension System, mm -hmm. to our RV. Right. Well, when we purchased our new Valor, it was a very quick upgrade that I wanted to make. And so we literally, mm -hmm. first stop, That's right. came to the beautiful campus here in Elkhart, Indiana of Moride. That's right, our first drive was all of four miles. So in this video, we're gonna talk about why, mm -hmm. specifically we wanted the the IS. Mm -hmm. We're going to dive into it, plus we're going to show you a little bit of the install of our IS. So, uh, let's go inside. So we have made it into the Moride showroom. This is Hayden. Hayden, what exactly do you do for Moride? Yes, yeah, so uh, I'm the service manager here at the, at the service department. Awesome. So Hayden's gonna take us through some of the suspension systems. So obviously we're having IS done to our new Valor, uh, but that doesn't mean that there's not other options. Um, so if you don't mind, what typically comes on, if, if there's no aftermarket anything on the coach that someone purchased, what's the starting point? Like what's a normal suspension look like? Yes. Yeah, so, um... Typically, you'll see a steel equalizer just like this one here. Um, this one's retrofitted with our heavy-duty shackle and wet bolt kit. Um, typically, you'll see something that looks along the lines of this. So okay. it's going to be a quarter-inch thick shackle, um, which is fine, um, but they are prone to breaking. So you could end oh, yeah. up with something like that. You broke down on the side of the road. It's not a good day. Um, with ours, um, they're half-inch, so it's quite literally twice as thick um, instead of um, rubber bu um, plastic bushings, we're using the steel bushings or the copper bushings. Um, and then we're, instead of a dry bolt, we're using a wet bolt. So that's the biggest advantage to our system, just on the shackle side. And just because we have a tendency to try and explain stuff a little bit simple, um, a wet bolt, what does that actually mean when you yeah. say wet bolt? Yeah, so um, the difference would be on this piece here. So on this would be a standard bolt. This would be a wet bolt. So what we're looking at is there is a greasable zerk. And then inside the bolt itself, there's a hole here um, that the grease will actually come out okay. and it will lube the inside of this bushing. So the wet portion of it, you're actually talking about essentially a grease, which I'm assuming is a lithium grease of some yep. sort that gets injected too, just like you would into an axle ball bearing system or exactly. racers and all that stuff. Yep. Okay, cool. So then I know a lot of coaches, um, especially at a factory, are starting to upgrade their suspension system. And so a lot of times everybody will hear the term, the CRE 3000 from you guys, and that's becoming more of a standard option for a lot of manufacturers, which is a good thing. Um, but what exactly, where does that change over? Like what's the big difference and what's the advantages of a CRE 3000 versus just a standard system? Yeah, so um, on a standard steel system like this, you're gonna get roughly two inches of wheel travel, roughly. Okay. Um, but it's solid steel, there's no dampening, anything like that. So the next step is the CRE, like you'd mentioned. Um, with this, we're going to get three inches of wheel travel, and then we have rubber blocks in here that help dampen road shock. So it's just okay. going to make the ride a lot smoother. We have this travel slot in here. Um, it's going to transfer less energy up into the coach. Okay, very cool. So, and you said the, the, the tire ride on this is what compared to, so you said two inches there? Three inches on, so on three, the series. Hence the three. 3,000. <laughs> look at them. <laughs> um, make it simple for guys like me. Um, very cool. Now, these look very different, but you were telling me before they're kind of similar. So this being the Alltrek 4000, which is essentially just the big brother to this, yep. based on my new knowledge on your numbering system, yep. it travels more. <laughs> um, and then this is the LRE 4000. That's correct. So with both those products, you're going to upgrade from three to four inches of wheel travel. Um, we have a lot more rubber going on with that. So you have a lot more dampening. Okay. Um, the LRE is essentially a version of 
the 4,000, that's a solid factory level. Gotcha. Versus the Alltrek is an aftermarket option. Okay. So that's the biggest difference between the two, but they're essentially doing the same thing. And then just out of curiosity, is this the LRE 4,000 down is, here? Yep. So this would be if you had your full leaf spring wet bolt system, that's just kind everything. of the whole. Yep. Gotcha. So then there's the, the big boy, mm -hmm. the one that everybody kind of puts up on the pedestal, right? Yep. Uh, and that would be the IS. The IS. So this is what we're having done. Uh, but where, so obviously independent suspension versus all of these other systems. Yep. So let's, from a basic starting point, what's the huge difference between everything we've talked about so far to this? Yeah, so um, the biggest thing is that we're doing with leaf springs. So it's going to look right. completely different. Um, the hanger on a leaf spring system is about three inches wide. The hanger essentially on our independent suspension is about 16 inches wide. Okay. Um, so it's quite a bit different um, just in the look. Another sure. thing we'd talk about would be the weight. So we're removing the tube axles. Um, we're putting on the independent suspension axle itself. So it's, it's going to weigh about twice as much as a standard tube axle. Um, but there's a lot more steel. There's a lot more beef there. Well, and it's a whole different engineering ball game too. It it's not, you know, in a, in a tube axle, you're going to have all those essentially tension bands. I don't know exactly what you yep. call them. Yep. And so those can get bent and damaged a lot easier than something like this can. Correct. So then we had two inches of travel, three inches, four inches of travel. What's the rough travel on this? Yep. So we're going to get five and a half inches of wheel travel on the IS. Um, wow. And we're doing away with a lot of the wearable components. So right. there's a lot of wearable components on a standard leaf spring setup versus the IS. We're doing away with a lot of that. Okay. So on something like this too, are you, do you, cause I'm noticing you have a disc brake mm -hmm. caliber on here versus a drum brake. Do you have to do disc brakes if you do, you do IS? Not. You do okay. not. So um, there are folks that get d uh, disc brakes from the factory. So right. if that's the case, we can mount them over to our system. Um, if you have drum brakes and you want to keep them, that's fine. We can also mount that way as well. Please don't do that. Just uh, <laughs> drum brakes, use disc, especially if you're towing. And honestly, and we're going to talk a little bit, I didn't surprise. We're going to talk a little bit about brake system here in a second, sure. just because I remembered it. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day too, a drum brake system is just not, you're not going to get the stopping power that you get from a disc brake system. Absolutely. And so with us, with as hard as we drive, we have a bad tendency of doing 12 hour days. Um, and then we go to the mountains quite a bit, especially with a big coach, like a 45 foot plus toy hauler. It's almost a necessary thing from a safety perspective at that point versus a drum brake system, which are known to lock up on you and just a whole different, yeah. <laughs> um, so who, in the reality of it, what is, who is IS meant for? Like what's the end user most ideal situation? If you're doing this, you really should consider doing IS. Yeah. So, um, if you're traveling on the roads today, you should have the IS. That's my opinion on it. Um. So he didn't know our <laughs> intro, and my intro joke was literally, I don't think the roads in America are getting any better. Yeah, that's accurate. <laughs> yeah, so um, a little bit of history about the IS. So it's actually been around since the late 90s. A lot of people don't realize that. Um, but to that point, the roads are getting progressively worse and worse. <laughs> um, and that's across the US. That's not just one area. Um, so the demand for this has really increased. It's going to become a point where I think you'll start seeing this as an option at a lot of factories. Yeah. But then I also think you'll see it as some standard in other, other factories as well. Very cool. So I'm ready for the random question and answer yes. time because I'm they're just flowing through my head. Yeah. So independent suspension, mm -hmm. similar or not all that similar to what's on like a vehicle or a truck? Yeah, so it's, it's very, very different. Um, we're, I thought it was going to be the same yeah. <laughs> or similar. We're using, we're using rubber shear springs instead okay. of like a coil spring. Gotcha. Uh, we still do have a shock absorber, which you'll have that on vehicles. Right. That's similar. Um, but just the way that this axle is traveling, so it's pivoting. It's not going vertically up and down. It's actually riding at an Oh, arc. gotcha. Yep. So if you hit the side of a pothole, let's say, or something, it's actually forming to the pothole a little better to reduce the wear and tear, I guess, whatever you're reducing on the coach, the actual impact of yep. the... Yep. You're I gotcha. It. Yep. So on a regular, on any other system, whether it's stock or CRE 3000, 4000 all trail, it's very vertical. It, it's, it stays vertical no matter what. And so that's when you get that rubbing of the tire. Like if you cut real hard, yep. the tire actually gives a little bit and you see it kind of twisting that yes. back, especially that rear Tripping. axle. Yep. 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 I gotcha. So when, when you have a standard, let's just use the CRE 3000 send as the most common one from you guys. Yeah. Um, when you hit a, let's say your front right tire on either side mm -hmm. hits a hole or something do with because of the leaf springs and everything being attached does the rear tire also move just a little bit obviously there's some play there but there's 
one tire can affect the other tires. Yes. So on a leaf spring system, it's going to be the, on the same axle. So right. if you're on the front axle impacting on the left side, you're going to feel it on the right side as I well. I gotcha. So that's going to be the biggest difference. Um, these being all independent, if something's happening on the right side, it's, the left side doesn't know it. Hence the name. Yep. <laughs> Very cool, man. Well, did I miss anything? Um, so one other feature that we could talk about yeah. with, with these systems would be our cross members. So you talked about oh. the tires scrubbing and leaning. Yep. So what that comes from is there's no lateral support in the frame in that section. Okay. So it's susceptible to twisting and tweaking and your hangers, your hangers here are, are bending right. and doing all kinds of stuff like that. We make a product that we call the X Factor that hooks in between the hangers side to side. So then it gives you that lateral strength. Okay. The IS is built in with tons of lateral strength. Gotcha. So it's already got the tubes that go across for the axle themselves. Plus then we weld in additional tubing. So you've got four points of lateral strength on the IS. Gotcha. But when it comes down to the leaf spring suspension systems, that doesn't exist. And that's where that X bracing comes in to help yep. support that. You got it. Very cool, man. Well, thank you so much for uh, showing us around. Yeah. I know that we're talking briefly about kind of the install process and, and why we're doing it. So we're actually gonna head back out and kind of check and see what's going on out there. Well, welcome into the truck. We have left Elkhart officially and we are headed south. But while we were in here, I wanted to do a couple of things and talk about the why we wanted to put IS on this RV in particular and kind of our first thoughts on the performance of that IS. So let's talk about the performance because um, yeah, I can hardly feel there's a coach back there and obviously you can see that Valor logo in my back window. We have a very large coach behind us, 46 feet 10 inches, so just under 47 feet long. Uh, she's a heavy bugger too, so her GVWR is gonna be right around 20,000 pounds. So, our last coach, we <laughs> we very much so thought about getting IS because we struggled with that. You know, we have a tendency to tow long, hard days. Um, yesterday's a good example. I was in the seat for about 11 and a half hours. Uh, to, coming back from Tampa, we drove for about 14 hours. And to be honest, with any other suspension, it just beats you up. These roads in the US are not great. And so, you know, you're driving and you're tense right behind the shoulder blades. I mean, it, it was bad. I could hardly, you know, I was so sore by the time I got done with a long drive day. And so we really considered that. Um, we already had the Mori uh, rubber pin box on that coach because it came with it. We actually tried a different manufacturer's pin box and uh, I was supposed to make it even better and really truly disliked it. So another reason is that we uh, fully intend on boondocking with this coach. I know it's odd to say you were talking about taking a almost 47 foot coach out boondocking, but we, we fully intend on doing that. Um, because of that, you can sometimes hit some funky terrain. And so we wanted to make sure that we were giving the coach the best possible opportunity to be as stable as it possibly could in those boondocking scenarios. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, the longevity of the coach. Quite frankly, if there's less vibration on the RV from day one, it's gonna last longer. You know, these things are essentially being towed down roads that are rough. And so, you know, what, what's the analogy I've heard is um, you're constantly putting your home through a like a magnitude six earthquake whilst driving through a tornado or something like that. So, you know, that kind of stuff is what I'm talking about. The IS smooths a lot of that stuff out and just makes it a better ride overall. So uh, let's get down the road because I know I've got a patch of road that's a little rough coming up here. and I want to show you how it does. Um, I wish I could have done it before on this patch we put the IS on. Uh, unfortunately, we did it pretty much 
went from uh, picking it up to Moride to have it done, so we really didn't get a lot of tow experience with it. But let's uh, let's get up here to some rough road, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. A few moments later. All right, well, we're coming up on that spot I was just talking about. So if you've ever towed a bigger coach, you kind of know what I'm talking about. When you hit a like bridge junction where it converts from the ground, uh, the regular pavement onto the bridge, you hit those joints. Sometimes those back tires of the trailer hit, and it's just a hot mess. Like the truck handles it okay, but then all of a sudden you get this jerking feeling um, in the back of the truck. There it was. I just hit it. <laughs> I couldn't get it out fast enough. Um, as you just saw, it, it kind of just glides over. I mean, the biggest thing there is, you know, because everything's moving independently, hence the name independent suspension, it, it just doesn't really move very much. I would actually say that the truck's causing more up and down motion, those types of things, than the suspension on the coaches. So I think for once in our lives, the coach's suspension actually better than the trucks. Now, with that being said, we do have airbags on board our truck and a few other things. And so I'm playing with those, trying to find a good sweet spot, um, which seems to be between about 55 and 65 PSI at the moment. Uh, I haven't gone much higher than about 70. So I might try that here in a little bit, but honestly, it just feels like the coach is gliding back there. So let's, uh, let's finish off the drive and then I'll give you my final thoughts once we get to our spot in Texas so we, oh, it got dark. And then I will give you my final thoughts once we get to our spot in Texas so we can get moved into this thing. All right, well, reunited and it feels so good. Finally home. All the way back, a little over a thousand miles on the brand new IS system mm -hmm. and disc brakes. Kind of mm -hmm. forgot to talk about the disc brakes. Very important, big safety feature in that regard too. Stoppy, stoppy, bueno, bueno. If you're gonna get the biggest RV on the market, you may wanna get some of the biggest brakes. I don't know if they're the biggest brakes, but they worked. But so. they work really well. So our kind of final thoughts on the IS system, mm -hmm. you know, for me, when I got home, I was nowhere as beat up mm -hmm, driving. Sure. You know, I talked about on the drive back a little bit with you guys, how I would get sore between mm -hmm. my shoulders after like a 10 to 12, maybe 14 hour Florida <laughs> drive day. Um, and I really didn't feel that. And I had a 12 hour drive day. Right, yeah. Now, is it still not stressful? No, I mean, it's a big RV. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it still takes a toll on you, but it's more of that mental fatigue. Yeah. Honestly, I, f I found myself coming up on junctions where I knew mm -hmm. the old rig would just be a big problem right. and I tensed up and then nothing happened <laughs> and it was magical <laughs> except for the whole tense up part at some point I'll relax a little bit and just get used to it so yes yes absolutely and I know I wasn't there for the big drive but I did get to ride around in it a little bit um, and we would go over like some train tracks and different things so I did get to experience how different it was from the traditional axles and I can say much better <laughs> so much better so one thing that we were talking about also is that inside that when you're going down the road and over the bumps and everything that just happened with rvs that everything inside stayed a lot better imagine that it didn't go bouncing around um, and so that was a huge improvement and that also makes us realize that there's less wear and tear on the entire structure yeah. if the stuff inside isn't moving around the whole thing isn't moving around nearly as much so that was huge and it made us um I'd say very happy with our decision. We knew we wanted to do this for a few reasons and we've been finding surprises along the way that make us even happier. Yep, so if you are interested in getting an IS upgrade or a disc brake upgrade or mm -hmm. any of the suspension upgrades that Moride offers, mm -hmm. make sure and check the description out below. There's a phone number and an email address uh, that you can contact Moride and get a little bit more information plus pricing. Pricing does change yes. a lot. Everything mm -hmm. in this world's going up. So yeah. uh, if you are considering getting IS, I would tell you to think ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a little bit of a wait list going on at the moment. So. A lot of it, but that's okay. It's a it's a huge upgrade and it's well worth it. And, and I would argue that it's well worth that wait. Yes, absolutely. So mm -hmm. uh, check out that down below. Make sure when you talk to whoever you talk to, one of the team up there, mm -hmm. uh, that you let them know that Ryan and Lauren from Miller's in Motion sent you. Yes. Full disclosure, we get a little something something if you do that, like a referral thing. So mm -hmm. uh, we would greatly appreciate it if you did that because it would help us out 
Yes. And get our butts on the road a little more. And this was something we were going to do regardless. That's just fortuitous. But also, we pestered them a whole lot. Yeah, and so... Sorry, Jack. Let them know something good's coming from how we terrorized them. <laughs> so. All right. With that being said, it is 100 and degrees outside here in mm -hmm. Texas. So I want to go inside where it's less than 100 and something degrees inside. So... All right. See you next week. Bye, Mom. <laughs>